Good morning, everyone, on our next lecture on system engineering. Uh, so today we will go uh, through the next uh, important information about system engineering. Of course, all webinars will be available for you later on on the YouTube channel Prof Webinar, as you already know. So let's start today today's classes. So today we will start from the uh, milestones of the system engineering. You already have the fundamental knowledge of the system engineering, the definitions of the system engineering. Today we will go through the uh, book of knowledge on system engineering and you will see what are the best practice and methodology which can be used when we are considering the system engineering methods. But starting from milestones, uh, I wanted to show you that the system engineering uh, has quite interesting history uh, and it was started uh, almost 200 years ago. Yes, but because as the first uh, uh, origin of uh, uh, system engineering as a discipline, we can consider the 1892 uh, when the rocket locomotive was invented. You will see in a minute how the rocket locomotive uh, looks like because it is, we can say, the, the very important uh, stage when we are talking about the technical system and when we are uh, talking about the new approach to designing the technical system, uh, the rocket locomotive is probably the best example. So next, uh, but of course, in the meantime, there were a few others important, important um, uh, events uh, when the system engineering approach was uh, started to be implemented. Yes, uh, it wasn't be named uh, then as the system engineering, but if you will consider today approach to the system engineering and the scope of the system engineering, it can be said that it was the first attempt to the system engineering. Of course, uh, it should be also here the date of uh, 1907 when the Ford T uh, was, uh, uh, was invented and the first line production of the automobile was run by Henry Ford. It was also the system engineering and probably it was origin of many of new approaches when we are talking about the production, about the quality management, and about the designing and engineering, including system engineering. Next uh, uh, important step was the uh, 1967, when the British multidisciplinary team uh, was created to analyze the air defense system. So it was also the attempt to uh, system engineering as the discipline, yes. Next a few years, it was during the World War II, when Bell Labs was supported uh, Nike development. Uh, next uh, step is uh, 1951 and 1980s, so it is almost 30 years, when CGIT Air Defense System defined uh, and management by MIT. Uh, next is uh, 1956, when inventions of systems analysis by Rand Corporation was developed. Next one is 1962, when the first uh, complex publication about the methodology for system engineering was published. So it was the first, we can say, the uh, complete uh, publication when all experience from the knowledge uh, come from those events and uh, new foundation of the new discipline as system engineering was published. So it is the important date when we are talking about the uh, development of system engineering. Next is 1969 when J. Forrest's Forrester uh, was uh, creating the modeling urban system in at MIT. So it was also the system engineering approach uh, applied to the modeling urban system. Uh, next important step is 1994 uh, uh, when Perry uh, Morganum uh, urges military contractors to adopt commercial practice such as 
E triple E P twelve twenty. So it was also the requirements of those uh, for those contractors and the first standards on the system engineering was released in 2002 when the ISO International Standardization Organization um, released the uh, ISO uh, committee and as the 15 uh, 288 as the uh, requirements of system engineering. So of course, the uh, internal standards have been already used, especially when we'll consider the NASA projects. And uh, we should also mention that the defense system, air defense system and the space system, including NASA, was probably the most important uh, place when the system engineering approach was developed and was uh, applied first. So, as I mentioned, uh, probably the first uh, origin of the system engineering approach should be considered as rocket locomotive. So, I would like to show you also how the rocket, uh, rocket locomotives looks like. It is, uh, even right now, it is a uh, um, great um, representative of technical system and uh, system engineering approach during designing and building this uh, rocket locomotive. And even now, the uh, uh, people who are passionate in the locomotive working on some uh, on some uh, teams to rebuild this locomotive so you can find even right now a lot of uh, reconstructions of the rocket locomotive so let's watch shortly So it is results of the system engineering approach. As you can see, few different devices, the concepts, and everything was combined at one rocket locomotive. And the system engineering approach allows to finalize those uh, huge steps when we are talking about the evolution of means of transportation, especially when we are talking about the railway transportation. So right now we can consider the, that it is very simple <coughs> uh, technology, but if you will consider that 200 years ago it was the 100% uh, we can even say a future innovations approach. Okay, so what are the key, key questions of system engineering? So first we have to uh, identify the needs. So first stage is, and the first question is, what do we do, what do we really need? Yes, so what needs are uh, we trying to fill? What is wrong with the current situation? If we are wrong, if we want to improve something, is the need clearly articulated? Yes. Next question is operations concept. So who are the interested users? Who will uh, uh, they use our product? And who is the different from the present? Yes. Uh, how is it different? Then next group of question is focus on the functional requirements. Yes. And uh, the question uh, which has to be asked is what specific service will uh, we provide? To what level of details? And are elements interface well defined? Next group of questions, key questions are about the system and architecture and the question should, should be asked as what is the overall plan of attack uh, what elements make up the overall approach and are these complete logical and consistent next questions are focused on allocated requirements so we should ask the fundamental question uh, as which elements address uh, with uh, with requirements is the allocation appropriate? Are there any unnecessary requirements? Yes, because all unnecessary requirements uh, will probably increase the final price and complexity of our product, which is also important factor when we talk about the maintenance of the system and the uh, quality of the system. 
Uh, next uh, questions are focused on uh, designing and uh, the question should be asked is, are the details correct? Do they meet the requirements? And are the interfaces satisfied? Next group of questions is focused on, on implementation and we should ask about will the solution be satisfactory in terms of cost and schedule? And can we re reuse existing pieces? And the last group of questions is focused on the validation. So we can ask about what is our evidence of success? Can we really measure and can we really set up that we did um, uh, success our final product? Will the customer be happy? Which is also important factor when we are considering the success of the business. And will the user need be met? Uh, be met? So these are examples of key questions when we are talking about the system engineering approach. So as you can see on each stage of system development, on system life cycle, which were presented on our previous lecture, we should ask such questions to be sure that we are still considering everything which is important for our final success. So as I mentioned in, uh, in the introduction, uh, we will work mostly today on uh, knowledge, uh, uh, knowledge areas uh, based on system engineering body of knowledge, which is CBO, yes, system engineering body of knowledge. I, I did choose as the version, as the uh, source version, version, the version from the 2018. And the book, the uh, book is quite uh, big because it consists of more than 1,000 pages. So you can imagine how many pages, how many knowledge are uh, completed in, the, in this uh, C book, yes? Of course, you can find uh, others uh, interesting guides, uh, guides uh, to the system engineering, which are something similar as the C book. For example, the NASA document, which is almost three times uh, less when we are considering the page number because it is probably about 360 pages. You can find also other standards or, or other best of practice when we are talking about system engineering when you can find 100, 150 pages. Uh, so that is how I choose uh, the CBOC uh, because uh, it, it should be considered as the most complete guidance uh, of the system engineering. So how the CBOC is, we can say, uh, uh, what part of the CBOC is important. So we've got seven, part, seven parts of the CBOC, yes. Every part is focused on different, you know, of different uh, key area, yes. First part is introduction, when you can find the overview of the role of value of the system engineering. Second part is uh, system engineering foundations, when you can find the system knowledge and how it is released to uh, system engineering. Third part is the system engineering and management, when you will read about the standards, about the life cycles, process and practices. The fourth part is application of system engineering, so you can find the different in a context in which standard life cycle process and practice are applied. Fifth part is uh, enabling uh, system engineering. So everything about creating people, teams and enterprise to enable good system engineering. It, it is also important part of the <coughs> system engineering, the human factor. Sixth part is related, uh, related disciplines. When you, you, you can find some examples of order disciplines involved in the life cycle and how we work with the other disciplines also. And the seventh part is probably the <coughs> uh, biggest part when you've got some examples of applying of system engineering approach. So all those seven parts, as you can see, are of course uh, corres correspond to each other and uh, if you will be able, which is not so easy to do because it's more than 1,000 pages, 
read everything, probably uh, we should consider that uh, it is the complex knowledge about the system engineering. Okay, so what are the, what are the key elements of the system engineering? There are five key elements of the system engineering. Uh, and uh, everything uh, is most should be focused on the customer. So it is all, all, uh, also the first stage of the system engineering approach. So we should uh, mm, uh, analyze, identify needs of the customers, then the engineers mm, uh, and employers in system engineering should specify it, uh, and implement uh, uh, solutions and it should work as the development team. Uh, the support should be provided by the life cycle uh, process, life cycle analysis, and in the results of the ideas of the system engineers, which has to be related with the needs of customers, should be designed as the system engineering uh, focus, uh, which should be uh, focused on ensuring the piece of work together to achieve the objectives to the whole and of course uh, uh, the uh, influence of uh, and interactions of environment has to be also considered so thanks to this approach and these key elements of the system engineering we can provide the proper product the proper need to the customer okay so i already mentioned about the uh, five um, key elements of the system engineering and what are the relationships of those five key elements key systems of the system engineering yes uh, wherever you will you, you will find the key a this this means knowledge area yes we've got five fundamentals knowledge areas in the system engineering first is the system science uh, uh, knowledge area, second is uh, system thinking knowledge area, third is system representation knowledge area, fourth is system approach to engineered knowledge area, and the, uh, the first one pro should, uh, should be mentioned, the system fundamentals uh, key area. So as you can see here, there are some important elements of the fundamentals of system engineering and systems, at, uh, technical systems as all which are the complexity, emergency, types of system, and uh, we will study uh, those uh, issues also. Uh, you can find the relation between all key, uh, key uh, uh, areas of the system engineering. As you can see, the relations are not, uh, not uh, just a single direction, it is with the feedback. Uh, and everything is in, important uh, through the next steps and next stage of um, system engineering. So let's let's talk a little bit more about those five uh, key uh, key elements of the system engineering. So first one is system fundamentals knowledge uh, area, which considers the questions: What is a system? Yes. Uh, it explores the wide range of system definition and considers open systems, system types, groupings of system, complexity and emergency. All of uh, these ideas are particularly relevant to engineered system and to the grouping of, the, of such system associated with the system approach applied to engineered system. For example, it should be the product system, service system, enterprise system. So these are all system which can, which has to be considered as the complexity uh, of the uh, system which we want to design, for example. The second uh, key element is the system science knowledge area, uh, which represents some influential movements in system science, including the chronological development of system knowledge and underlying theories behind some of the approaches taken in applying systems science to real problems. So these are the next key um, knowledge area which has to be studied when you uh, want to start to work uh, with the system engineering approach. The third is the system thinking knowledge area 
which describes key concepts, principles, and patterns served across systems, research, and practice. And probably uh, this uh, key area is most difficult to achieve if you don't have the uh, natural um, skills to do it or a lot of experience. So it is good to, to work with the team and to work uh, with your uh, way of thinking, including uh, interesting methodology as mind mapping, as, uh, as um, brainstorming and so on. The fourth is the representing system with model knowledge area, considering the key role of ab that abstract models plays in both of development of system theories and the application of system approaches. So, this you can find some uh, developed uh, models which helps to to deliver the system engineering to to your contribution. And the fifth one is the system approach applied to engineering system knowledge area which defines a structures approach to problem uh, or opportunities, discovery, exploration and re uh, resolution that can be applied to all engineer system. The approach is based on system thinking and utilizes appropriate elements of systems, approaches and representations. These uh, knowledge areas provide principles that map directly to system engineering best practice, which probably brings you the full package of knowledge on system engineering. And based on those key knowledge areas, you are able to create your own methodology when we are talking about the system engineering. And you can work to solve different types of the problems. Okay, so uh, what is also important is the concept of uh, system engineering engines. So we can consider those all the CBOC uh, key uh, knowledge area as the um, uh, elements of the uh, engine of system engineering. And if you will consider everything which is outside of the system engineering, which is the requirements flow down from level above and requirements from down, uh, from down to level below, yes, and also the uh, realized product from the level below and realized product to uh, level above, yes, if we will consider the levels approach. Uh, you can find the three most important stages when we are talking about the system engineering approach. First, uh, first is system design processes, when you should uh, identify all requirements and definitions of the processes and also find out about the technical solutions of the problem. Uh, then uh, you can uh, work with the knowledge on technical management processes, uh, when you should learn how to plan the processes, how to control the processes, how to assess the processes, and how, how to uh, work on decision analysis and decision system. And the last, uh, last element, of the uh, system engineering uh, engine is the product realization process uh, with the contribution of product trans transition process, evaluation process, and design realization processes. So everything together is the complex approach uh, represent as system engineering. So first, uh, we will start from system thinking, because it is, as I already mentioned, probably one of the most difficult skills to achieve uh, just based on the uh, knowledge area. Yes, it's, it's good to have some experience or, or some natural skills uh, which, are, which, are you, uh, which you will be given, for example. So system thinking is concerned with uh, understanding on or interrelating in problem situation based on the principle and concepts of the system paradigm. Yes, so it is the overall definition of the system thinking. And as you can see here, the system thinking should uh, should uh, uh, consist of such issues. Yes, first is systems concept. Uh, then the system uh, principles and patterns, yes, because if there is some methodology which can be used, it should be used, yes. Uh, you should also think about the uh, component in use of, so 
those who think that act in terms of the systems, yes, and you should think about the possible uh, applications according to the systems representation. If there are some similarities, you can find out about this and about the system approach applied to engineering system and system science. So it is all which represent the system's way of thinking. Uh, what are what is the environment of the system engineering? Because you have to consider that the system engineering is just one of the part of the uh, activities uh, which are conducted in the industry or in the company. So first you have to consider what is the impact and how the system engineering approach is familiar with the enterprise processes, including the management processes, including the investment management, including the system life cycle processes management, resource management and quality management. These are the fundamental processes in the company uh, which, uh, which, uh, which helps uh, to reach the goals of the company. And we have to uh, be sure that our system engineering methodology will support those processes, not uh, not be in front of those processes. Then the agree agreement uh, processes, uh, including acquisition and supply. Uh, then we've got the project processes, because more of the companies started to work as the project methodology. So we've got the next stages of the projects, which is planning, uh, assessment and control, including decision making, risk management, configuration management, at information management. So this is the level of the project management in our company. And it should be also considered as the environment, as the nature environment of the system engineering. And when we can uh, locate the system engineering, probably in those areas, which are the technical processes. Yes, we should consider the stakeholders requirements, uh, analysis, uh, requirements of analysis, architecture, design, implementation, integration, verification, transition, validation, operation, maintenance and disposal. So these are the uh, technical uh, stages of the life cycle system and the system engineering uh, has to cover all those uh, operations, but taking into consideration the interactions with others environment of our technical system or our system, which are the project processes, environment processes, enterprise processes and agreement processes. So as you can see, it is the complex environment of the system engineering and you have to be sure that everything is working to work together well. And it, uh, this approach is presented in the uh, already mentioned uh, uh, system life cycle process overview uh, per uh, international standardization organization, yes, which was first released in 2002, as I already mentioned. Uh, when we are talking about the system engineering, we should also mention about the model based system engineering because uh, it is one of the good practice and good. Mm, already functionality methodology of system engineering. If you are able to use the systems models to work with the system engineering. So this you can see the different models for the same products, which are the Carve Heikel. So you can see, you can use the structural physical architecture model. You can also use the dynamic performance model. You can use the behavior functional architecture model and you can see any others model, which is mass model, cost model, manufacturing model, reliability model. Probably you should use all of them in a different stage of system engineering approach. So in, on some approaches, on some stage, you will use the uh, structural physical architecture pro pro processes and dynamical performance, especially if you will consider the the designing uh, stage and the realization stage and control stage, probably you will, do, you will those, uh, those model can be used. So everything should work as the integrated system model and must address multiple aspects of a system, including all models. 
I already mentioned on our previous lecture about the types of the system. Uh, one of the most important is systems of systems. And the system of system, which is COC, are defined as an interoperating collection of component systems that produce results unachievable by the individual systems alone. So the most important advantages of the systems of system is that delivers the unachievable results by individual systems alone. And I already mentioned about the similarities when we are talking about the team approach for the project management, when acronym of teams means that together everyone achieves more. It's exactly the same. So uh, the following challenges are influence uh, the development of system of system. The first one is the system elements operate independently. Each system is a system of systems is likely to be operational in its own right. The second one is the system elements have different life cycles. So COCs uh, involves more than one system element. Some of the elements, uh, system elements are possible in their development life cycle, while others are already deployed uh, as operational. It ex uh, extremes cases, in extreme cases, older systems element in COC might be scheduled for disposal before newer system elements are deployed. So this is everything about the different life cycles inside the systems. The next one is the initial requirements are likely to be ambiguous. The requirements for the system of systems can be very explicit for deployed system elements. But for systems elements that are still in design stage, the requirements are usually no more explicit Excited that the system's elements requirements. Requirements for COC major as the system's elements uh, major. The fourth one. Complexity is major issue. As system elements are added, the complexity of system interaction grows in a non-linear function and non-linear fashion. So you shouldn't consider uh, the linear composition of next uh, uh, results because as you already know the system uh, the results are un, uh, unachievable by the individual system alone so it is also the issue furthermore conflicts of missing interface standards can make it hard to define data exchange across system elements interfaces the next challenge is management can overshadow uh, engineering. Since each system elements has its own product, project office, uh, it is a very often situation, the coordination of requirements, budget uh, constraints, schedules, interfaces, and technology upgrades further complicated the development of COC. The next one is fuzzy boundaries case uh, confusion. Unless someone defines the controls, the scope of systems of systems and uh, manage the boundaries of systems elements, no one controls the definition of the external interfaces. And the last challenge is the systems of systems engineering is never finished so it, you have to remember that it's a constant improvement even after all system elements of cocs are deployed product project management must continue to account for changes in the various system elements life cycle such as new technologies that impact one or more system elements and normal system replacement due to pre-planned product improvement so it is also important challenge. So uh, I would like to also show you the one of the examples of COC in, um, system, which is systems of systems, uh, straight away from the handbook of CBOOK also. So it will be the example of the uh, multitude of uh, per perceived system of interest in an aircraft. Uh, and its environment of operation within the transport system of system. So we've got the aircraft as our, uh, we can say, core 
system engineering focus yes as you can see it is very complex uh, system by itself so we've got to airframe system uh, propulsion systems flight control system navigation system air crew system life support system and many many more especially if we will consider that each single subsystem of subsystem is uh, also uh, advanced uh, in such system when we are talking about coc uh, and coe uh, which is systems of interest approach we should also consider the uh, interaction with air transportation system outside of aircraft system so we have to consider the airport systems the fuel distribution system the air traffic control system the ticket system and many many more so all of those subsystems will be also the impact factor for our system so if we will consider all transport of air tra all air transport system we have to also consider all ground transportation system and maritime transportation system because all subsystems of transportation uh, cooperate together so we've got the road transportation the rail transportation system we've got the maritime transportation system we've got the inland water transportation system and you will consider the intermodal transportation system everything is combined together so as you can see the systems of systems uh, looks like quite large relations uh, matrix uh, on this example okay so what are the life stages their purpose and decision gate options so you've got the uh, life cycle stages over here the purpose of each stages and decision gates yes so first stage of the life cycle of the system is concept yes so uh, the purpose of concept stage is identify stakeholders needs explore concepts and uh, propose uh, viable solution the next stage is development so the goal of development is refine system requirements create solution description build system and verify and validate system the next one is production so the goal of production stage is product uh, produce system and inspect and test and verify the um, produced system next stage is utilization and recycling which is uh, which goal of this stage is operate system to satisfy user needs and of course the environmental impact of the system next is support stage when we will provide sustainable system capability and retirement system and store achieve and dispose of the system on each stage decision gates can be like ex uh, execute the next stage continue at this stage go to the prediction stage hold project activity and terminate project so after each investigation of each stages you have to consider the decision gate like this so of course uh, the best one is the continue at this stage and execute next stage but you have to uh, also uh, answer the question about go to the predictive uh, pre preceding stage hot pr project activity and terminate project uh, so what's about the system approach so system approach after the system thinking is the next stage and neck next important key elements of the system engineering which has to be studied when you are considering yourself as the expert in the system engineering so based on the cbok you can find a lot a lot of uh, knowledge in the part three of the cbok so you will find there about the life cycle models about the management standards and life cycle processes so system approach to engineering system has to base on the system thinking it is the previous stage uh, so uh, you, you you should consider the system representation and concept and principle principles are already uh, uh, in the concept of the uh, system and system engineering uh, you have to also considering the uh, next questions where identifying and understanding problems and, and opportunities 
synthesis possible solutions, analysis and selection between alternative solutions, implementing and providing a solution, deploying, using, sustaining uh, systems to solve problems and stakeholders' responsibility. Of course, all the activities and principles can be uh, can be uh, find out in the CBOC part 3 uh, as the uh, methodology which uh, also uh, which is also very useful when we are talking about the system approach to the engineering system it is the system science so if you are well known in the system science you uh, are able to define the system you know what are the most important properties of the system approach it, it will be everything will support the system approach to the engineering systems uh, generic system engineering paradiac uh, the feature below uh, identify the overall goals of system engineering efforts uh, which are first the understanding of stakeholders value which are probably the most important part when we are on, on the stage of, of the first stage before the concept, even the concept. The selection of the specific needs to be addressed, the transformation of the need into the system, the product or service which has to be provided for the, for the need of the customers and stakeholders, and the use of that product or service to provide the, st the stakeholder value. So everything is about understand what is the value to the stakeholder. The paradigm has been developed according to the principle of system approach. So <clears throat> you can use the system breakdown structure, which will be the topic of our <coughs> future lectures on technical system and the system engineering. Uh, and uh, it is just a show description what are the genetic system engineering uh, paradigm, including the system breakdown structure and life cycle processes. So everything together should uh, bring you a lot of important information and uh, a lot of solutions. So uh, how the generic life cycle model looks like? So first we've got system of interest, for example, we've got the concept, we've got the definitions, then we are designing the system, then there is the realization of the system, then we've got the production, support, utilization, and then the retirement. So these are the next stages of the system, life cycle. And if we will consider what are the different activity during each stages, including concept, system definition, system realization, utilization, and retirement, uh, you can see what are the content and involvement, uh, involvement on different uh, activities in the system engineering. So the highest volume of stakeholder recommends and operation concept has to be in the concept stage, yes? But also the when you are after the system definition, you should check again if it is correspond with the requirements of the stakeholders. And it is decreasing in the next stages of the system. Next, next we've got system requirements. So the system requirements and the designing of the system, of course, uh, it is the huge factor in the system definition stage. System implementation is uh, way through the system definition to the system realization. Then we've got all activities on the integration and verification. As you can see, it is not uh, just one peak, but we've got few local peaks. And on each stages of the system engineering, of the system life cycle, you have to conduct the investigation and verification. Well, when the most important part uh, on the in integration and verification should be taken uh, uh, during the system realization, yes. The next use support disposal. Uh, so you, you can see that we've got few uh, activities, increase of the activities on the concept of the definition and the system uh, definition and system realization. But the most important part for the use support disposal is uh, under the utilization support and retirement. And the last is project management. Project management is the activity which should be taken 
every uh, every time when we are working on the, our system engineering the most risky part which is the implementation of the system has to be provided very carefully that is how the project management is the good way to do it because project management is the management is in unstable and unknown environment so this is the good place and time to do it but you don't have to forget you shouldn't forget that even during the concept definition, system definition and utilization and the retirement, you should also also use the project management methodology. So uh, an example of hierarch hierarchical uh, decomposition of a system of uh, interest. So here we can see the system of interest, set, uh, interest, which were defined in our previous lecture. We've got two main pods, uh, subsystems, system one and system two. Uh, we've got uh, next level of the systems and we are going deeper into the next level. And this shows the hierarchical decomposition of the system of interest and the best uh, methodology to use for the decomposition should be work breakdown structure or product-based breakdown structure, which is very good and useful methodology to do it. Here you can see the two examples of the project-based breakdown structure takes from the um, NASA uh, System Engineering Handbook. So first is for the space transportation system, which is the level uh, zero, level one, ex external tank, tank and so on, level 2 and level 3. And the other example is for the flight, seg flight, flight segment, when you've got the more detail, the product uh, breakdown structure with the uh, payload, spacecraft, bus and launch auto uh, accommodation. So here you can see the complex uh, and more detail the product break breakdown structure. And for the decomposition, in the system engineering, the most important methodology which should be used is the work breakdown structure or product breakdown structure. And I will give you also lectures and webinar about the work breakdown structure and product breakdown structure in the system theory. Okay, so uh, how it how it can looks like? Yes, based on the uh, based on the uh, book uh, by Forsberg and Moose from 2012 the new product planning process can look like this so we've got a planning process getting started we've got the project requirements which has to of course be uh, correspond with the stakeholder requirements then we've got the management analysis cost technical proposals then we've got some standards which can be implemented then we've got the best practice so these are what we will uh, uh, use as the foundation of our project and then we've got uh, information which can be useful when we are talking about the project plans and updates so the configuration management configuration plan deployment and manufacturing plan and so on risk management so these are the most Im important skill set which can be used for the planning process so uh, after the stage of planning process, you should also consider the master schedule, which is the Gantt chart mostly. So you will be able to uh, estimate what is the time uh, you will need to, to run this project and uh, design the system. Then you can create the product uh, uh, list, project product list, work packages or work breakdown structure so everything inside including the uh, correlations and possibilities to analyze the organizational resources which can be used for the system engineering so everything together is the stage of the planning of uh, our uh, system engineering process so uh, of course the pr planning process uh, also has to consider the solving of the problem because it is the most important think and issue when we are talking about the system engineering we've got the requirements we've got the needs of the stakeholders and we've got problems which has to be solved especially when we are talking about the new system so the new product planning process solving the problem also uh, 
can be considered uh, as the process like this. So we've got the master schedule, we've got the development uh, uh, network, yes, uh, which uh, which has to be checked a few times. We've got the uh, uh, project uh, project uh, structure, we've got the work breakdown structure com component, we've got the uh, responsibility matrix which shows who is responsible for what and everything together it's about how to organize like, the uh, stage of solving the problem and it is probably the most difficult part of the system engineering. So, as conclusion of system engineering steps, we've got five major steps. First one is the concept definition. So, we should business or mission analysis before we will start because you should remember that the system engineering has to be correspond with the whole environment of the business, including the enterprise processes, the uh, the project management processes and any other processes which uh, which are also in our company. And uh, important part of the concept definition is stakeholder needs and requirements analysis. The second step is system definition. So uh, you have to start with system requirements and how the system requirements are <coughs> fail with the stakeholder needs. Uh, you should uh, set up the system architecture. You should uh, set the logical architecture model development and uh, physical architecture model development and system design and system analysis. So these are the, the tasks should be uh, should be considered when we are talking about the system definition. And the third step is system realization. So uh, it's everything about the system implementation, about the system integration, which is the next step, about the optimization, optimization of the system, system verification. So you have to check if everything is working when, uh, well. And the last thing is system validation. So you have to improve your system and try to uh, make him useful in different uh, environment, including the industry uh, conditions. Okay, so we've got two more steps when we are considering the system engineering steps. The fourth step is system deployment and use. So you should, uh, it consists of system deployment, operations of the system, system maintenance, Logistics, which are a set of uh, supporting processes uh, for our system. And the last steps is system engineering management. So we should think about planning, assessment and control of our system, risk management and risk analysis and risk assessment, measurement, decision management, configuration management, information management, and quality management. So as you can see, so many important areas which has to be considering when we are talking about the system engineering management, that we can say that it is fully integrated management system which should be applied uh, on the stage of system engineering management. Okay, and uh, last thing for today, because it will be also the topic of today's workshop, is stakeholder expectation definition process. So, uh, these are the uh, next steps which should help you with the uh, stakeholder expectation definition process. Uh, also, uh, based on the CBOC, uh, which is System Engineering Book of Knowledge, so you should start from the established list of stakeholders. The next step is elitic uh, stakeholders expectation. Next is established operations concept and support stages, strategies. 
Next, define stakeholder exp expectation in acceptable statements. So you, you should consider if all the accept, accept, uh, expectation of the stakeholders are acceptable for you. Analyze acceptation statements for measures of effectiveness. So if it is possible to check uh, the effectiveness of, uh, of fill of the expectations. Validate that defined expectation statements reflect uh, be directly uh, traceability. Obtain stakeholder uh, commit uh, commitments to the validate set of expectations and baseline stakeholder expectation. So as um, as the input to um, and the information you will need to to go through all those stages is the uh, initial customer expectation, other stakeholder expectation, and customer flow down requirements. It is very useful to, to prepare it on this stage. As uh, the output of the next pro stages should be the uh, validation stakeholder expectation as the document. It is good to have it. Then the concept of, of operation, that's enabling product support strategies, and measure of effectiveness. Uh, including the uh, taking into consideration the stakeholder expectation. So I think that it would be enough for today. So thank you.